started. All right. So good morning, everyone. Good Friday morning. Um, we're going to go over uh, new contracts today. Now, we'll be only talking about creating new contracts. We will not, <clears throat> excuse me, we will not be going over anything with mid-year contract changes, just because the fact is we are making a lot of changes to mid-year contracts right now. And so we're going to kind of do that at, at a separate time. But obviously, it's kind of hard to believe it's almost that time again that uh, new contracts for the next school year are going to be needed. So we're going to go over the new contract portion today, at least, and get you get you ready for um, instructing your districts on how to do that, especially if you have new district employees. It'll be really helpful. Um, if anyone has questions during the, the uh, presentation, go ahead and unmute yourself or add it to the chat, whatever you'd like to do. Um, we'll go ahead and get started here. <clears throat> All right, so um, when you are going to be doing new contracts for the employees, we have uh, the new contract section under the processing tab. And you just go to processing and then click on the new contract option. And under that option, there are three different tabs. The first tab is just the new contract maintenance tab. So- Hey, Lori. Yeah, sorry. So I didn't mean to interrupt you. I, I think you maybe you missed my chat. We have a couple people in our office that are waiting in the waiting oh, room to get on. in. Yet. Yep. Yep. I just see. I'm sorry. I just see. Nope. Just saw that. No yep. problem. I just admitted them. Yep. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Yep. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Okay. So, um, the, like I said, the first tab we have the option of is the new contract maintenance option, and that option can basically be used to pull in one employee at a time if you want, or maybe they're just adding a new contract for one employee. That's what that option is basically being used for. It's used for another option, but we're gonna talk about this option right now. So if I click, click on the new contract maintenance tab, which is already there, it defaults to that. If I click this copy option, <clears throat> What it'll do, it's going to copy the current compensation that is already out there for the employee. So I'm just gonna pull up an employee here. And then I, it gives you the capability of choosing which compensation. So if he had more than one compensation out there, I could choose which compensation I'm wanting to add to new contract. And then I have to tell it, you know, what contract type I'm creating. Well, it automatically defaults to new contract when I use this new contract maintenance option. And then I have the capability of adding a contract start date and a contract stop date. So like I said, if this is a contract for next year, I could go in and enter the contract start and stop date information. And then I can just click the create tab. And when I do that, it's pulling in the information from the compensation that's sitting out there currently. So what I can do then is go in and just modify the, you know, the uh, contract amount. So maybe he's gonna make $10,000 this year. I can update that. And then if his pays in contract needs to be updated, so maybe, maybe that old compensation, um, you know, he started mid-year or something. I could go in and correct that and, and change it to the correct amount of pays and contract. Because normally, if they're working 24 or 26, which is your normal um, uh, coverage or pay, pay, uh, pay contract, pay and contracts over the year, it would already be pulling in from the compensation record. So, like I said, I have to just make sure that I uh, pull in the contract or put in the contract amount and the obligation, make sure the pays and contract is correct. Um, if I need to go in here, and maybe the hours in the day are not populated on the compensation right now, I could actually populate that at this point on this new contract screen. Um, obviously the raise date, that doesn't play into this when we're creating a new contract. 
If I need a description, maybe it's not on that old contract. I can put that description in at this point. Um, he's a coach. And then um, you weren't on the description. Sorry, you weren't on the description. Oh, I put it in the extended service. That wasn't too good. Thank you, Roxana, for telling me that. Okay. And then um, the EMIS contract fields, again, those are those override fields, just like they've always been um, for EMIS reporting. So, you know, down the line, or maybe even with this new contract, you're going to create the new contract, but you want a different dollar amount for the contract amount or the work days populated for EMIS reporting. Those fields could be populated right now if I wanted to put that information in. So as Lori, you, can, you have someone that's waiting to get in. Oops, thank you. Sorry, I cannot see those people anywhere once you started sharing your screen, Rally Rice. I'd okay. let them in. Yep, that's no Sorry problem. That. Thank, just thank you for telling me because yep, I'm not a problem. Thank you. <laughs> I kind of miss it. So, all right. So what I'm going to do now is I want to get my new paper period for this employee. So I have to make sure once I get all of my information populated on the screen that I hit this calculate button because what that should do, and it's telling me the paper period has been calculated. And then there wasn't any change in the unit amount. Okay, so if I go back here, I think that it was like 8.33.33 8, 3, 3, 3 or something. Well, now his paper period for this new contract has been created, it's been populated. And again, districts can verify this, you know, they can go in and make sure that, you know, the paper period is what they came up with as far as their calculations, but it should pretty much match what, you know, their calculations were for that particular uh, position. Um, once the co that, that uh, compensation is created, I all I need to do is just click that save option. You can see here, I do have a clear option. So if I don't like what I see here, I could just click that clear button. It would clear everything on the screen. I could start all over. But the, the important Sorry, thing- Quick question. Sure, yes. I'm sorry. So do they need to put in the contract workdays for the unit to amount or will it be calculated for, will the workdays be calculated from this compensation to start and stop date? If they have a, if they have a job calendar on their compensation, their old compensation, if they have a job calendar with workdays, it should populate automatically. But obviously it doesn't look like this one does. So I could go in and enter the contract work days manually because you can see that that field is, it allows you to enter information. So maybe I'll just put in 185, whoops. After I get rid of the zeros, there we go, 185. But it should, like I said, if he has a job calendar with work dates, and I'm thinking maybe when we activate it, it would pull it into, I'm gonna look at his job out in compensation right now and, and see exactly, he's probably at a default calendar is my guess, since he's a coach, but yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. But I could go in and um, enter that contract work days and try to see, because there is no job calendar on the screen. Up oh, there, no, that's calendar start and stop date. That doesn't help me. Hold on, let me just make sure. It says COA winter, there it is, winter there it is. coaches. Yep. yep, I totally passed it. I know I have a, um, work days in for this calendar. So let me see here. It didn't do anything. But let me try it again. There we go, there we go, yeah. Once I put in the job calendar and since it has work days on that calendar, it actually, when I do calculate, if that field was blank, it actually puts in the number of work days from that job calendar. I was going to say, appreciate I appreciate you showing that. Yeah, no problem. Um, so then all I'm going to do is just click the save option. And then once I save the record, I'll see it out here in new contracts as this position right here. 
So anytime, like, let's just say that they wanted to activate, or, you know, make that, that, con that new contract act right now. When they do that and they're using new contract, they can go in and just select that uh, contract by checking the box. And then once they click the activate button, it, it should automatically pull it over into the compensation screen. So it gives me an error, not an error message, a message saying, am I sure I want to activate one new contract? Um, and then when I transfer, it transfers the primary compensation flight to the new compensations. But this is not a primary compensation, so it should not. Oh, it will because I had that box checked. I should have unchecked it. That was my bad. But if I go out here now on compensations, I should see that coaching job activated, pulled over. <laughs> yeah, I've just got to too click happy and I didn't unclick it in time. So here's his new position or the new contract. Click on this. I think this is the right one. Nope, that's the old one. Hold on, let me click that off there. There we go. Yeah, so here's this new one that I just activated. So it did pull it in. So like I said, that basically can be used to like create a new contract for one particular one employee and pull it in. That's basically a lot of the reasons it's used for it. The other reason it's used is we're going to talk about next. Um, I'll go back into processing in the contracts. And when I do that, the next tab we have is the mass compensation. Mass copy compensation. Yeah, I got to get it right here. So when I pull that up, this will allow me to mass copy multiple compensations that are sitting out there. So maybe I have different pay groups that I want to actually pull in and start creating new contracts for for next year. I could go in and I could choose this job status. So if, there, if it's all active job statuses, I could leave that as active. And then maybe I have, like I said, just particular pay groups that I'm going to be working with. Now, if I wanted to include archived employees, I could check that box. In this instance, I don't really want to because I don't want any employee that's archived because obviously they probably could probably not be there anymore is, is my guess. I mean, they maybe could have come back or something, but I wouldn't use this archived employees option just for the fact that if I choose that, it's not going to just give me one employee. It gives me all the archived employees that have those particular pay groups. And then if I wanted to, I could just type or choose or choose a date or type in a date of, uh, of compensations that were active as of the date that I entered in here. I could choose that as well. Now I'm going to go in, I could actually put in my, my new contract start date and stop date for my new contract, just like um, I did earlier when I did the mass contract or the, the uh, new contract maintenance. I'll just go in here and put in a start and stop date. <laughs> oh, gee, out of all, like I said, these are my test files. So you can see here I've got all of these pay groups and I have one compensation that's going to pull in. Let me, let me see if I can pull in a few more. Uh, let's do this. <laughs> That's pretty pathetic there. There we go. That looks a little better. I have 143 now. I like that. <laughs> Just so you don't only see one out there. So what I do after I pull in my pay groups and I put in my start and stop dates, I'm going to go in and click the build new contracts option. And when I do that, it's going to actually just pull in everything that's currently out there in the compensation screen, less, you know, what they're being, what they've been paid, their accrual and everything on their current compensation. But this new contract maintenance then will allow me to go in and start modifying the records to, be, you know, to update it to what the new contract for next year should be. So if I go in to Timothy Vance, I'll just pull him up. You can see, you know, I pulled in, I'm gonna change his job calendar right now. 
because I know that the CAR calendar has days. Um, I had the compensation start and stop dates that I had populated pulled in, which is correct. Um, again, everything is pulling out of the compensation the way it is right now. So it did, it pulled in his hours in a day, which, were, which are seven. Um, his pay plan, his pay unit, all of that pull information pulled in. If his position description pulled in, his status, et cetera, the pay group, the building that he's in, maybe he's changing buildings next year. I could go in and I could change that. You know, maybe he's going to be in the 400 buildings now. This gives me the opportunity to do that as well as the department. Maybe he's changing departments. I can do that on this screen and make that change. And then when I go down here, again, we have all those EMIS fields just like we did, you know, because we are in the, the um, new contract maintenance screen. His old paper period is sitting out there right now. And so are his, his obligation and his amount. Those are all there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update that for, for the upcoming year. His pays in the contract, again, they were 26 on his old compensation. I want it to remain at 26. I'm gonna leave that. Maybe they're changing to 24 pays. Maybe they're going to semi-monthly. So the district has the capability of changing that. Um, I'll just leave it at 26 right now. He was stretch paid. He's, he was Mark stretch paid on the old compensation. So I'm going to leave that as well as stretch paid. And then let's just say that I want to add a new payroll account. I could go ahead and do that by, by clicking on the add payroll account. And let's just say we'll use this one. And then the rate type would be percentage is an active account. Does it qualify for lead projection and employer distribution? It does, so I check those. And then um, the charge amount already um, defaults to 100. If that is different, maybe he has two different accounts. I could go in and change that and make that 50%. And then I could go in and add another account. Let's see if I can find another account here. Do this one. And we'll put that one at 50%. Maybe if, if they're using a grant account, they may be going in and adding that new grant account, and then that grant account has a max. They could go in and add that maximum in here as well if they wanted to do that. Again, once I have everything populated that needs to be changed or populated for this uh, new contract. I need to click this calculate option. It tells me the work days were calculated, the paper period was calculated, and the unit amount was calculated, which is basically what we want to happen. So you can see the work days are now showing as 260. His unit amount is, is now displayed on the screen. And his paper period also has changed. The, the, the new paper period was populated on this screen. So once all of the information is out there and it's accurate, I'm gonna, again, click the save option. And when I do that, oh, I can't remember, was this the guy? <laughs> After all that? <laughs> yeah, that was him, okay. So now all that information is out there with those new uh, pay, payroll accounts dis displayed as well. And so what I would do is if I'm doing it this way, I could go in to each record and modify it and add the information for the employee. There is a mass change option out here as well that can be used. So maybe we want to go in, I'm trying to think. Uh, let me look and see if the job calendar is listed under here. Because I could change all their job calendar to a particular job calendar. But I don't think it is. Yeah, up oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right. So let me see if I can mass change this. C-A-R. C 
if it allows me to do this. All right. So basically, obviously you wouldn't be doing this, but I'm just going to just test it here and see if I can get that job calendar on all those records to change. Give it a shot and see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> it's not going to work. Okay. Hey, but, Lori. Yes. Quick question for you. Mm -hmm. If when you change the payroll accounts through this, does it automatically stop the old payroll account that was established with others? Yes, it should. It should. Actually, what we'll do, Roxana, is I'll go ahead and activate this and then we'll look at his pay accounts. But it should stop the old one and add the new ones to his pay account. But we'll go ahead and I'll just activate that one record. I'm going to take that off. There we go. Timothy Vance, job one. All right. All right. So if we go in to the pay account, Here's his job one. Sorry, my system is a little slow this morning. Must be because it's Friday. Well, come on. <laughs> it's just because we're all watching. That's what I know. That's exactly what it is. There we go. You can see he's got like a gazillion accounts. Yeah, you can see here he's got start a start date on these two. And then there's a 731.22 stop we date. We can't see that yet. The, yeah, all of the other ones. And he had, looks like he had a lot of them. <laughs> like he had specific miscellaneous accounts. Right? But it actually just put the start date on the new one. And then it inactivated or stopped all of the old ones that he had out there. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And that was a really good question, Rafana. Very good. Okay, um, let's go back in the process. Sorry, there's a question out there from oh, Andrew. Hold on here. Let me go back. And you may have slowed into new contract maintenance to change things. Um, let me look, hold on, we'll look at the uh, documentation to see if there's, I think, I'm wondering, you mean, like you're saying you went in and you used this mass option to create the contracts, but now you're wanting to mass update the contracts. Is that correct, Andrew? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, okay. We will look at that and see because I don't know if we have a mass load option for new contracts yet or not. I mean, I know we have an import option. We're going to talk about the next, but as far as mass loading to new contract, I'm not sure. I don't believe we do, Lori. I'm looking yeah. and I do not see a Pretty new contract sure we under don't. mass load. Yeah. yeah. As of right now, Andrew, that answer would be no. <laughs> But it would be very nice if we did have that because, you know, if, if they basically went in and did that mass copy of all of those uh, conversations, then they could just use a spreadsheet to update all the information. That would be super Thanks. nice. Can you, you can technically bring in all those, all those columns and then run a report, correct? Yeah, you could, to but be the able thing to is you, you can, you can load. Yeah, but you can't load because we do not have a mass load option yet to change new anything in new contract. Oh, I see what you're saying. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. He's wanting to like you. You've got the mass load. Uh, you copied it. You copied the compensations in. And I think what he's asking is, hey, can I have a spreadsheet, you know, with the data on it, and then just make all the changes out there and currently like i said in mass low we do not have anything as far as new contract 
And so I believe right now the answer to that would be no. What you'd have to do at this point would just be to use the new contract import option. Because when you use the new contract import option, you're pretty much basically just importing everything that's correct, everything that's correct for that new contract without having to go in and manually change it, you know, on the mass copy screen when you mass copied it in. So um, that is something, I don't know if we have any JIRA issues for it, Andrew, but that is something really a, a good question that we should ask. I think we'll talk, I'll ask that at our next sprint meeting, you know, if that's something that we can eventually get out there because that would be really helpful to have that. Thanks, Lori. Yeah, yeah no I, no I was thinking like, what if somebody had already gone through most of the work of manually modifying and then they realized they needed to mass change? Because I mean, when people want to do spreadsheet stuff or they're going to mass change stuff ahead of time, I tell yeah. them to do this, the spreadsheet. But I could see a scenario where they realize in August they need to change a bunch of stuff. And I mean, yeah. they could use the mass change feature, but Right. Um, we, and, and I'm sure mass change it pro it pro probably doesn't cover everything. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. maybe like dates, you know, like start and stop dates, they might be able to mass change those. But yeah, it would be very nice to have the capability of being able to use a spreadsheet and, you know, just mass load all that information to make that correction. I, I understand what you're saying on that for sure. And I will definitely ask, I will bring that up. Um, I think next Thursday we have a sprint meeting. So I will ask that question. Yeah, I'm just, I wanna go back and look at mass change because like I said, there's probably only certain fields, obviously that make a mass change. Let me look here. Yeah, there's quite a few, but but it would be nice because like you said, and I mean, a lot of ITCs don't allow the districts to use a mass change option just because they don't want them messing something up, but um, they can mass load and that would be probably more beneficial for the, for the districts anyway, for sure. So we'll definitely, I'll definitely mention that and we'll bring it up and we'll see what they say. Are there any other questions on that mass copy compensation option? Like I said, mass copy compensation and new contract maintenance kind of, are, they work together because you're mass copying in all the compensations, but you have to go to the new contract maintenance screen in order to maintain each particular contract to, to update it and make uh, corrections to it. Oh, Andrea found, it looks like she found a feedback issue that we do have out there for mass loading of new, of new contracts. So I think probably, Andrew, we do have something out there for that. Let me pull it up. That way we'll see exactly what it says. That sounds like somebody asked about that. What is it, 108.3? Yeah, 108. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So that's exactly what you're asking about, Andrew. And I created the ticket. You think I remember that? No. <laughs> so it does sound like we do have a ticket out there asking about it. So we definitely, it would definitely be nice to have that enhancement. I'll bring, I will bring it up at the sprint meeting next Thursday though, anyway, just to uh, keep, keep it, keep it going, keep it refreshed, you know. <laughs> Okay, any other questions on the first two tabs in new contract? Okay, the last uh, option we have is the import new contracts. And like I said, this option will actually allow you to use a CSV file in the correct format with the correct headers um, to actually load pretty much all the new contract data that's already out there that's determined. So they've created the uh, CSV file with the, the app appropriate data for the new contract. And they're just basically going to import it in. And then when the time is right, they'll activate those contracts. 
Um, let me see here. Talk about what we need to do. We do have um, a new contract compensation worksheet, um, a JSON file that's out in the uh, redesign share reports. So if I go into the help, the public share library, we do have a, like I said, a JSON file that, that you could, or you or the district could actually uh, import into reports and then run a, run a report and create a report using that, that option. So let me just go down here to this report. It's right here. New contract compensation worksheet. So if I if I click here, I'm going to open it because I don't remember if I put this in CSV or not. Because normally what what it does, it creates it because it's using the headers from the uh, the file. It creates it as an XLS file or, or an Excel spreadsheet file. And then uh, once the district goes in and up, makes updates to the spreadsheet, they have to make sure that they save that as a CSV file. Because when you are actually using the import option in new contract, it will only you allow a CSV for it. And you can use, you can try the Excel, but it won't work. It'll give you error. And so I'll just go in. I think I just I just put the CSV file out there so you can see what it looked like. Maybe. There we go. Yep, it is the XLS file. So hold on, let me open it just so you can see what it looks like. So what this is doing basically is they're just creating like a template spreadsheet. And then they're going in and they're modifying that spreadsheet. So I'll pull this over so you can see what it looks like. So you can see it's an Excel format. When they use this, when they have that report um, imported into the report, they use this, they can pull in all of the contract compensations. And then what they'll do is they're going to go in and maintain the spreadsheet. You know, maybe, maybe this person isn't here anymore. They're going to just go in and get rid of it. Or maybe, um, you know, someone else has two jobs or whatever. They're going to add it to this to this spreadsheet. But they're going to go in here and make modifications to their start and stop dates. If there's any um, changes, obviously, there probably will be to their contract amount, their contract obligations. They're going to make all those changes on this spreadsheet and then save that spreadsheet as a CSV file, then they can import that right into new contracts with all of the data already updated. It's already corrected. It's already there, ready to be activated for the new contracts for the upcoming year. So usually this is what a lot of districts use is the new contract import option. And like I said, that um, template, that spreadsheet or that, that JSON file is out there to at least help them get started on creating a template so they can uh, get the data uh, pulled in for the report and then work on the report as far as updating it for the new, the new contract information for the upcoming year. Um, they could, you know, on that spreadsheet, they could sort it by pay group, however they want to. It, uh, there's options, you know, once, because the pay group is included on that spreadsheet, they can sort however they want to. Um, and then just so the districts know, there are certain fields that have to be on that CSV file for proper loading of the file. Um, and those, those required fields are basically the contract type, obviously. You have to tell it, you have the new contract, major change, whatever, but Obviously, we're just focusing on new contracts. So you have to make sure that that contract type column is on there and it's populated because it will, if, if it's not there, it's going to tell you, hey, you can't import this uh, because there's no contract type on there. The employee ID, the job number, the new compensation label. Um, keep in mind, the label is only required if that employee has more than one compensation for a position. So if they're, they have a position, but they have more than one compensation for that position, 
then you need the label defined on the uh, CSV file, the new contract CSV file. Um, you want to have obviously the contract amount. If it's, if, it's a, if it's a stretch paid employee, the contract amount and the contract obligation. Um, and if you want to go out and actually make sure you have everything uh, defined on that CSV file, again, like I said, this template will pull in all of the required fields, plus it pulls in some other fields as well that will be on the on the uh, the spreadsheet that they can make modifications to. But we do have all the information as far as the uh, the new contract import what's required out in our documentation. I'll just go back in and I'll pull that up so you can see it. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> I went to the wrong thing. Oh my goodness, there we go. Okay, so we're doing import new contract options. So if I just go and click on that, you can see here, it talks about your country, et cetera, but there's a, there's a section on here that actually, I must have missed it. It tells you like what is required. Here it is, I just passed it, I went too far. The import uh, field values, and it tells you, you know, what is required. Anything that's required, you can see it's bolded. So you can see that information in our documentation. But like I said, all of those required fields should be on the template record if they use that option from that um, new contract compensation worksheet. It, that all that information should be included. Um, one thing to keep in mind, whether you're using what, whatever option you're using out there in your contract, so let me just go back here. No matter which option you're using, once you have new contracts sitting out there on the screen, we have reports that can be processed and ran so the districts can verify, you know, totals. Maybe they have a, a tape with all of their totals for the, you know, the new contract obligations or the amounts. They can actually run different reports because like I said, now I have all of my new contract information out here. I could go out now once everything is finalized or updated how I want it to be. I can go in and run reports. And where we have the reports um, are, we have under the reports option, the reports manager, we have uh, two different reports. One's called SSDT new contract payroll accounts. And that will give you all the account information as well as the, I think the obligation and the amount. And then we also have a new contract summary report. So let me just go ahead and run both of those for you. And narrow it down here a little bit so it pulls them up a little bit quicker. Maybe. <laughs> Everybody close your eyes. Maybe that's why you're looking at it. <laughs> okay. So the first one, like I said, it's called the new contract payroll accounts. So I'm just going to go ahead and generate that because what it's going to do, everything that's currently sitting out there, a new contract right now, it'll pull that information in to this report. So I'll go ahead and generate the report. All right, so I'm going to pull up the report, show you what it looks like. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. So here is uh, that new contract pay accounts report. It gives you the employee number, their name, the position, the contract amount, and your obligation, and then the new contract pay accounts. This is not really good because, oh, never mind, never mind, I'm lying. 
uh, I was like, Brent Hurst, he's the one I created that new contract for, but it wasn't for this position. So these are all of the different accounts that are out there for him currently. And I, like I said, at the bottom of the report, um, I don't think it does, no. But what I did, and you can do the same thing if you want to, I didn't like the way that report Look, I wanted totals at the bottom. So what I did, I just went in and made my own report. I basically went into that new contract payroll accounts report. And then what I did is I added a summary. I added a summary for the contract amount and the contract obligation. That way I can get the totals at the bottom if I want to, you know, compare to like a tape that I have. Uh, out there, you know, make sure that my totals match. I could do that, but you can see here. I just, I just added the function of, of summarizing both those two fields, and then I also did the same thing for the other report, the uh, new contract summary report. I did the same thing as well. I'll go ahead and run that one with my modifications because that one again did the same thing. It didn't give you totals at the bottom but I will give you the one that I created that shows the totals at the bottom. Pull them back up here. All right, so I will process this report right here because that's the one that I actually pulled this, the totals and the summaries. So I'm just gonna go ahead and generate this report as well. All right, I'll pull that one up so you can see it. Maybe, once it's done loading. Okay, so you can see this just is a summary of all the new contract information. Gives you a little bit more information as far as like the employee, what type of contract, um, the amount, the obligation, the work day, contract work days, hours of the day, um, pays in the contract, stretch pay, pay unit. So it, it gives you more of a breakdown of the employees, uh, each employee's information. And if I go down to the bottom, this is where I said I actually pulled in, I wanted summaries of pretty much like the obligation and the amount. I could, I did summaries on the unit amount and paper periods as well. You know, if your district totals all of that, you know, you may be, they'll be able to see if their totals are matching as well. Um, another option that we have as far as a report for new contract is a canned report that we have under reports. It's just called new contract report. And like I said, that's a canned report, but they could go in and select to process that report. That one is going to give you pretty much all the information for each employee's uh, contract. So let's go in and I'm just gonna go to the default. Um, the contract start dates were 8 1 through, let's see, no stop date. Whoops, I want that in there. Um, and let's just, um, let me just pull in this one because if I don't, it's going to take forever because there's like 150 records out there. So I will go ahead and just generate the report. Probably only going to give me a couple, maybe one. <laughs> or two since I changed those two to the car calendar. Yeah, then it'll go a lot faster. Especially since the way my system is running right now. So you can see it gives you a breakdown of the information for each individual employee. So that's what that report uh, looks like. And Again, it's up to the district. They can run all the reports. Maybe there's only one or two reports that they want to run. It's strictly up to them what they want to process. Um, also, out in the uh, public shared library, I'll go back out there again. We do have another report it's called New Contract Payroll Accounts and Original Pay Accounts. That's a JSON file as well. 
So if a district wants to use that, it'll have to be imported into the reports. Oh, what am I doing here? What in the world? Oh, there it goes. Okay. All right, so let's go back down. It's right here. This new contract, payroll account, and original pay account, JSON file. So if I click here, it'll show me what the report looks like. Again, any of those public shared reports, in the example will show you what the report's going to look like. The JSON file can actually be clicked on and then downloaded and then imported into reports. Doing anything? There we go. So this is what that new contract pay account report looks like that's sitting out there in that public shared. And it's kind of similar to that other report that we have sitting out there. It gives you, again, the contract amount, the obligation, the position payroll accounts uh, by, by pay account, and then whether it's active or if it's not active, it will be unchecked. So that just is another report that someone had created and put out there the public shared uh, option in case someone wanted to get information uh, regarding active and inactive accounts. Once you've gone in and done all of your updates or your importing or whatever you need to do with your new contracts, what you're going to do is go into, again, new contracts under processing. And then if you want to activate those contracts, you can. Now, the thing about it now with redesign, um, their old contracts right now probably have a stop date. You know, it's going to take them to the last pay, pay that they need to be paid. So maybe their contract stop date right now is 731 of 22, which means at this point, if, they, if you wanted to, you could activate these new contracts right now because they'll, they won't be getting paid on. They'll just be sitting out there until the 8122 date actually starts pulling in in a payroll. So they could do that if they want. If not, they don't have to. It's strictly a district decision how they want to do it. If they want to wait until that last pay of that contract, the old contract is paid, and then activate these new contracts, they can do that. It's strictly up to them. And the thing about it is, since the fiscal year on this contract is for the new fiscal year, it won't do anything as far as EMIS reporting. It won't pull in at all because for right now, we're only pulling in anything from 7 1 of 21 through June 30th of 22. That's the current fiscal year. So, like I said, if they activated these con contracts right now, nothing's going to happen with them as far as EMIS reporting because they all have contract start dates of August 1st of 22 which is next fiscal year. So that's not gonna hurt anything at all. So if I went in, um, I could go ahead, I'm gonna activate all of these contracts. I would just go in, if I only wanted to activate a few, maybe there was only a couple of them I wanted to pull in. I could do that just by selecting, checking the box next to them and then clicking activate. If I wanted to activate all of them, I could just go in here and click on that box at the top and it you can see it highlights all of the records all at one time. And then I could just click activate. It would pull all of them over into the compensation screen. And they're sitting out there for next year for the new contracts to start. Okay, are there any questions on these new contracts. We're going to talk about creating non-contract compensations next, but does anyone have any questions regarding these three options in new contract? No? Everyone's so quiet. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to talk about creating non-contract compensations. Um, 
the new contract feature that we have right here right now that we're looking at, it can't be used to create non-contract compensations, okay? Um, to create new non-contract compensations, a CSV file, again, with the appropriate header information has to be defined, and then that can be loaded directly into the compensation screen. So we do have, <clears throat> excuse me, out under reports, we do have an option under report manager. It's called the SSET non-contract compensation mass load extract. It's a really long name, but I'm just going to go in and narrow it down here. If I can get it to pull up a little quick. There we go. So this basically is an, uh, a report that, or a template that the district can create that will pull all of the non-contract information in right now, the city currently sitting out there, and then they can go in and make modifications to the file. So let me go ahead, I'll just generate this. And again, you can see when you create this, it creates it in an Excel format because it uses those Excel field names to put those in the header fields because you have to have header fields to, to import the CSV. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate the report. And when I do that, it'll, like I said, it's going to give me all of the information for my non-contracts that that's currently sitting out there. Now, I'm probably going to get a boatload of employees which are sitting out in non-contract. You can see they are. So um, I can narrow it down. You know, maybe I only want people that have a, a, a calendar, not calendar, what am I doing here? Here we go. A, a start date, you know, anything from uh, 721 and later. You know, that I can narrow it down a lot. I could just go in and sort on that date range and that way I can filter it and pretty much eliminate a lot of those records that I don't want. If they're archived, they shouldn't be pulling in anyway. But that will allow me to go in, I'll just go into the date range, I'll do a sort. Let's see, where are you? There we go. Okay, I'll just do this. All right, so obviously I don't, I probably don't want to do anything with these because a lot of them have stop dates. So I could go in and this will allow me to go in here and then filter. Maybe I'll just, there, that looks good. I like those ones that say 20, 21, there we go. I'm just going to delete all of those. So now I probably have the most current ones that are out there. And maybe I need to go in and change the, date, the start date because I want to have a new start date of the current, of the upcoming year. I could do that, enter that information in. Maybe the unit amount is changing. Maybe now we're going to pay, you know, anybody that's a teacher $125 and a custodian $50. This is the place we can go in and actually make all of those changes, update all of that information. And then once I do that, I could go in and save this file, but I want to make sure I save it as a CSV. I want to change that type to a CSV file. And then that way, when I get ready to import that information into the compensations, it's ready to go. Because again, if I left that as an Excel file, I'll go in and try to, to load it. But when I do that, I will get an error. And the really funny thing is, I've, I've, I've done this myself with just other things. Like I went in and created the, the file and then I made updates. Well, I forgot to save it to a CSV format. So I went in and tried to, tried to you know, import the data. Well, it looks like it imported. It tells me like, I have, say I have one record on the file. It says like 55 records updated. And I'm like, okay, yeah, something is not right with that. And the reason is, is because I forgot to save it in CSV format. Obviously nothing changed, it didn't do anything. But that, yeah, you'll figure it out right away. It's very, very, uh, <laughs> very finicky. So once I've got my CSV file out there, you know, I've made all my changes, made my updates for the upcoming year. 
I can then go into the mass load option, which is all under utilities. I apologize again for my system. I know it's my system is being slow. So then I choose my file. So I have to find my file that I created. And then once I do that, I have to choose the importable entity that I'm going to be loading that into, which is the compensations option. So when I get my file and I choose compensations, and then if I click the load option, it's going to take everything that's on that CSV file and then load that into compensations for those new compensations for the non-contract employees for the next school year. Okay, and then after they after you load the information using the mass load feature, the district could actually go in then to compensations. and go to the non-contract compensation tab. And then what they can do, just to verify, maybe they wanna make sure, hey, I wanna make sure I got, you know, everybody loaded, everybody's in there. Oh, let's see, where are the dates? The dates that I want. Nope, those aren't it. Um, I can never find the dates that I want. Test date, test date. I want start and stop date, but I can't find it. There, date range. <laughs> Hold on. There, it's right in front of my eyes. Okay. So if I went in and chose the date range, compensation, maybe start, maybe I put a stop date in there too. I pull that in, then that's going to be on my grid. Once I get that, I can filter that grid to only pull in that the stop date that I am. So maybe I put in 8 1 of 22. Okay. I could go in. Oops, I got to go back to non contract because it reverts back to all compensations once you make a change in the grid. But you can see here, I'll just go in and put um, 7 1 22. So that should give me everything from 7 1 22 and on. Okay, then what I could do here is I could just go in and create a report to give me the information. You know, I, I could have pulled in, you know, like the unit amount, anything I want to show on my report for the, the particular uh, contract, the non-contracts that I created just to verify, you know, everything is there. And then what they could do is, that's not what I wanted. Hold on, let me pull, let me pull in. Let me pull in the, uh, let's look here. I want to pull in the unit amount because what I want to do, I want to create a CSV file and then total that unit amount on my report once I do that. So let me go back in and just do it this way. I should have done that before, I didn't. All right, so I'll go back to new contract compensations and I'll pull in, I'm just gonna pull in anything from 71 of 22 because I saw that I had 71 of 22 out there. And like I said, when you're filtering on the grid, if I put 71 of 22, it's gonna give me everything from 71, 22 and later. If I wanted only 71, 22, I would have to put an equal sign in there. That way it'll only give me that particular date. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the report option. This time I'm going to create it as a CSV file, which I wanted to, to do to begin with. And then once I do that, I could actually go in to that CSV. And if I wanted to total unit amounts, maybe the district totals all of their unit amounts, they could total that unit amount and make sure it matches their tape total. That way they're sure, hey, everybody's in, everybody's ready to go for the new year. Um, anybody have any questions on that? No? No questions on that? Okay. Um, 
I think that's it. And again, like I said, we will be having probably a Fridays with Fiscal just specifically on mid-year contract changes once we get all of those updates made because it's going to be a lot better. Right now, we have some issues with it not calculating correctly, and they're going to be making quite a few changes. So I think it's going to be a lot nicer. And so we will actually have that as a Fridays with Fiscal so we can show you exactly what it's doing. But this was more important right now because new contracts, like I said, are going to be here before we know it. <laughs> so if anybody, if anybody has any other questions, let me know, or you can, you know, shoot me an email or whatever. And if not, have a great weekend. It's supposed to be kind of nice, I think, this weekend. So enjoy the weather because next week is supposed to be cool again. So, and it's good to talk to everybody. And we'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Lori. Have a great day.